I want to check up on uh, something because I don't fully understand it, but something I have some concern, and other people have asked this particular question, and that has to do um, with, the, with the blockchain. And understand this is important for the exchanges because the various exchanges can trace this through and make sure there's no double spending and that the money supply, the supply of Bitcoin, isn't exaggerated, and I see that as being very good. At the same time, then, it raises the question of security. How do, how do you understand this, the amount of information that you have to have to make sure the system works and limits and guarantees you know, you know the number of bitcoins out there at the same time uh, how does this affect any threat to uh, to security uh, you know and and what the government might do to to use this information well the blockchain itself um, is just a giant public ledger and you're right that there's a lot of information out there but the way that it's all computed and stored on all of these individual computers is very very efficient you can kind of think of it this way if you gave me a hundred dollars and um, I wanted to confirm each of those dollars, where all of them came from. In the Bitcoin network, every transaction that took place up to that point will be compared against the one transaction taking place now to confirm that each one of those dollars have been accounted for. Um, they can trace it back to you know, its origin, and it's all done virtually, so very quickly. And with so many computers out there doing this at the same time, it keeps that confirmation time down to about 10 minutes. Um, and each transaction is confirmed several times, sometimes thousands. And again, it's a little hard to wrap your head around because it's all happening virtually and very quickly. But I think the thing to keep in mind is that all of these individual computers out there mining and reconciling these transactions are the same as having tons of accountants that are confirming that the one transaction that, let's say, took place between us was actually legitimate and um, can be traced back. When you say trace back, does it go back to a particular computer or somebody's names associated with it, or just a date? What actually do you find when you look this up? When you look it up on the blockchain, you'll see the transaction that took place, and it's confirming that um, Ron had one Bitcoin and gave that Bitcoin to Anya, and it's going to confirm where that Bitcoin came from that you had in the first place, so that it's in fact your Bitcoin and that you have permission to then give it to me. And the blockchain is going to show when it has actually been received. So confirming Anya did in fact receive this Bitcoin and now I can use that for another transaction. Tell the audience uh, what they do if they want to know more about it. Okay, you can sign up on coin.mx, becoming a new member. And there's lots of resources for new Bitcoiners just about Bitcoins themselves, educating yourself on the best way to go about investing and the different strategies behind that. And we encourage you to take a look at blockchain.info. There's tons of information out there for people that are just getting started. And education is the most important part to make sure that um, you can jump right in, know exactly what you're doing and um, avoid some of those risks that are inherent in this type of industry. So you can find that information on our website and just there are several other basic resources. I'd say blockchain.info is one of my favorites for frequently asked questions. There's lots of forums out there as well. Bitcoin Talk is a popular one. Coin.mx participates in this community by offering free advice and um, just having a presence because we know there's people out there that are just getting to know us and also just starting to learn about Bitcoin and we want to contribute. Now when they sign up, is there a fee or do you only have a fee when you have a transaction and you buy or sell a Bitcoin? There is a membership fee. It's $10 and it's taken out of the transaction fees over the course of time. And so that's not something you have to worry about initially, but you can go ahead and get started and see all of the trades that are taking place on the platform right away. To me, it's, it's so fascinating and interesting uh, because I've talked about the competing currencies and I put in legislations to allow the government to compete. And that's what the dollar needs uh, right now. And that's why they have these very, very strong legal tender laws is to force us to use this paper money. So I think in that sense, it's very good that they haven't come down hard. And it may well be that the, the thing that's on our side on this is that technology is way ahead of them. You know, even if they did, is it going to stop it? And this is why I've made the argument that technology Technology eventually will be the method how we counteract big government. And uh, it remains to be seen. And uh, that is one of the reasons why I was anxious to visit with you today and talk about uh, this, uh, uh, this issue. 
Yeah, it's definitely an exciting alternative. I think that the government, again, they just have not wrapped their head around it. They're kind of avoiding it. And it's making up such a small percentage of the market now that it's not a concern. But I think as it continues to grow, they're definitely going to take a second look and have a lot more to say about Bitcoin. Peter Cook joins us in Washington, where he knows they do not accept Bitcoin on K Street. For, Finally, for it's the still moment, Washington. Tom. For the moment. <laughs> Once again, those of you who are watching today and you're interested, uh, you should go to uh, coin.mx to find out more information about it. And uh, stay tuned to the Ron Paul channel to keep your updates on all issues of economic important and the ideas of liberty. But I want to thank Anya for coming on today for, for this interview and for, uh, you know, more information on how Bitcoin works, because I'm sure the issue is going to be around for a long time to come. But thank you, Anya, for being on the program. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it and look forward um, to just more Bitcoin talk on your show in the future.